All right, so we left off with our JavaScript implementation for the Stripe Elements library, and so far, so good. It's a lot to take in, but if you just follow the documentation on Stripe, most of this comes from there. The only difference is when I extended it to add these parameters uh, that we wanted to save, basically just more information about the user. Up to you if you want to do that. You don't have to, but it's kind of nice when they come to maybe back to your app and want to update their card or use a you know a same type of payment method they've used before they can just go ahead and do that if you build it the right way so what's next is to actually get this data these parameters back to our controller so we can process them to our database and to do that we need to jump into our jobs controller and amend this a bit since we've done it we did edit it before but we want to actually go through and change a bit on the create method primarily so all of those things that we're passing through need to come in through here and get defined as actual parameters. So the main one first is the params of the Stripe ID, or Stripe token, excuse me. So we'll actually do Stripe token. And we'll do job type. And I want to get all this stuff because the job type in particular, it's just so I know what the charge will look like on the form. Uh, so they can see basically what they're paying for in the end. So job title equals params. You're just kind of repeating yourself here, just getting all those things. So title, uh, let's see, card brand, params, uh, let's see, user. So we had to do it this way, card brand. Because when you do submit a payment, it was in an object. It looked like this. It was like user, and then it did another object that was the brand, like card brand, yada, 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 like Visa. Uh, and then comma separate that, and it's like card expiration, whatever. So to access that, we need to get this object, and to do that, we get that through this parameter, but we need to go one step further and get that. So that's how these two are coming to about. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so then card expiration month goes params. User and card exp month, card exp year. And then card last four. Okay, so with that done, we can actually initiate the charge. And that looks like this. And of course, this comes from Stripe's docs, but I'm gonna change it just a bit to match our own app. So you put charge equals, and you do need the Stripe gem install installed to do this. So make sure it's installed. Then we can initiate it to charge. And say you were doing subscriptions, that would look like customer, I think, in this case. Could be wrong there, um, but charge is what we're after since we're just looking for a one-time fee. And then we'll create. And then we'll pass in all the data we want. Um, you can specify the exact amount and we'll do so like this. And it's in, um, I forget what format, but this ends up being $300. So add an extra two zeros to everything. Currency, I'm in the States, so we're gonna do USD. And that should be a string actually. And then our description is going to be our job type. There's more you can pass through here, uh, but this is why I grab the job type as a parameter up here. Just a little more information for the user. So statement descriptor, so this is what it would look like on their bill. 
basically going to be the charge ID plus probably like the job title. I could, you could put in like your company name there if you wanted to. And finally, the source is the report one is the token. Great. Okay, so to save these things on the creation method, we need to actually pass in that stuff to the current user who's applying for the, or actually posting the job. So we can grab the current user like we normally would in our views and then just commit these things to memory. So we say Stripe ID is gonna equal the charge ID. And typically on a typical, just basic charge, you don't need to save a Stripe ID, but if you're doing subscription model, you do need the Stripe ID. So if a user were to cancel their plan, but re-up it later, you would just reestablish that ID and everything would be good. Um, that's just kind of something to take into account if you're thinking of going the subscription model. Uh, definitely check the docs if you haven't yet. So here we're getting the card brand. We're kind of just doing a bunch of repetitive stuff here, but it's necessary to save to the database. So uh, exp month equals card exp month current user dot card exp year equals card exp year. Uh, current user dot last oh card last four equals card last four and then finally with all that defined we want to save it with a bang so basically if you think about if you're in the rails console you can do this stuff just willy-nilly so if you were to set this to this that's initially doing it and then ultimately you still need to save the user so we do that at the very end um, so then we can check and do all this normal stuff which is respond to save redirects back to the job we can maybe just append a different message here your job listing was purchased successfully giving the user some inclination that they did good and then finally, at the very end of this, after two ends, you can actually come in and write a rescue statement. Rails has these built in if there's an error, uh, but we can do a stripe error. With the hash rocket to the event, and then flash alert we'll get that message if it's a specific message. And then if it's an error, we can just tell Rails to, hey, render new again, because something didn't go right. So we'll go back to the beginning and go back to the actual form. Uh, I think that's it. Let me double check everything. Typed it right. We can just double check now. Let's see if uh, Stripe shows up first. Looks like I've got a syntax error, straight statement subscriptor. Let's go back to that. What did I do wrong? The commas? Yeah, I missed a bunch of commas. There we go. Okay, and is there a form displaying? No, it's not. What do we got? I don't need this. Invalid unexpected token. Right here, I have an unexpected token. I have one too many parentheses. So let's go back to our charges. And right here, I think I rendered one too many. Let's see if I get any more errors. Invalid unexpected token, job self. All right, there we go. I had a typo, guys. I went back and double checked everything. You're gonna get some info warnings in your browser and it's just basically saying you're not on a secure server, so we'll let you test, but that's it. Definitely don't do this on an insecure server. So now we have this form here, and it's part of Stripe Elements, and you can actually type the card number. And I'm just doing placeholder for now. So let's just do a demo job to see if everything works. So 
So we got our listing posted. Let's double check it went through to our uh, console. Usually you can see inbound what happened. And you scroll up, we've got our parameters of the actual form there. Um, the avatar is there, good. We've got our user information and the Stripe stuff, great. And then we're getting update users. We're setting the Stripe ID, the card brand. We're setting all this stuff to these things. So that's awesome. The parameters are working. And we could double check our Stripe uh, dashboard to see if a payment came through. And it looks like it did. Yeah. Cool. So let's see. We can go to events too and, and monitor that if there's going to need to be more. We've got our successful request came in. So more, more came through. So perfect. Um, it is working. So that's the beauty of Stripe. It, it can kind of tell you what's working, what isn't. Uh, so up next, we'll actually get into our making our index and show views look a lot better than this. And I think I might just kind of speed things up for that part because it's mainly HTML. So uh, in the next video, you may just see a, a working piece of that and then we'll kind of talk through it.